Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the aging in place initiative of the town of North Hempstead. We provide programs and services designed to assist and support the older town residents who wish to remain in their homes as they age. If we don't currently provide a service, we will try and connect you to that service. Call 311 or 869-6311 to get more information or receive services. Welcome to Project Independence and you. Here at Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM, WCWP.org. I am your host for today, Rebecca Miller, and my co-host today is Otto Los. Morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Otto. And today we are talking with Kathleen Cameron. And Kathleen is the director for the Center for Healthy Aging and National Council on Aging. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Kathleen, all the way from Arlington, Virginia, where Zoom makes it, you know, makes you available to us, which is wonderful. How are you? I thank you. And I really appreciate the invitation to be with you this morning and, and talk about all things aging. Yeah, we're, we're so grateful to have you. And, um, you know, we are, I know um, just before we started the show, we just wanted to get a little bit of information and background on the Center for Healthy Aging and the National Council on Aging. So if you could give us a little background. Sure, I would love to. Well, um, the National Council on Aging or NCOA has been around for over 70 years. We are one of the oldest national organizations dedicated to improving the lives of older adults. And we define older adults really as 60 and over. And we believe that every person deserves to age well. And our vision is a just and caring society in which each of us, as we age, we live with dignity, purpose, and security. You know, I think something we all want, no matter what age. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a mission to improve the, the lives of millions of older adults, especially those who are struggling um, either financially or with um, health concerns. And we have been involved over the years in developing um, a number of innovative programs and services for older adults. We were involved in the early days of Meals on Wheels, foster grandparents. Most recently, we've developed some um, tools for older adults to use, um, including something called a benefits checkup, which is an online tool that helps people understand what benefits they're eligible for and actually puts them in contact with um, ways in which they can apply for those benefits, you know, whether it's SNAP or heating assistance, transportation assistance, Medicaid, and, and so on. Um, we also are very active on Capitol Hill. Um, we have um, a very strong public policy department and we're, we're close to, to Washington, D.C., which makes it nice. And we focus primarily on improvements to Medicare, Medicaid, and the Older Americans Act. And the Older Americans Act supports programs in the community for older adults. So as you can imagine right now, we're really busy okay. focusing on some of the Medicare improvements that you may have talked about on your radio program, you know, like adding um, hearing, um, dental, and vision uh, benefits under Medicare, as an example. Is so, this a federal program? So, yeah. Um, right. Medicare? Yes. Medicare is No, a, no. The, the National Council The National on Council Aging. on Aging, no. We're not a federal program per se. We're a, a national nonprofit organization. We do have federal funding um, that supports some of the work that we do. For example, the work that I do at the Center for Healthy Aging, we have grants from the federal government to help local organizations implement programs that improve the health and well being of older adults. And we can talk a little bit about some of those programs like falls prevention or programs to help people manage their chronic illness, help them be more physically active, um, help maybe manage depression, substance use. So, um, so, no, we're not a federal agency, but we're a national organization. How do, how would the average 60 plus senior access the programs? Are there satellite offices throughout the country? Um, is it something that you train other organizations to teach your programs to, to seniors? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, one, one way um, to access uh, the programs of the National Council on Aging is through local senior centers. So we also house the National Institute for Senior Centers, and we support all the professionals who work at senior centers with resources, training. We also manage the accreditation for senior centers. Um, so many senior centers across the country um, use our programs, you know, implement our programs like the health programs that I talked about, or they do benefits counseling using the benefits checkup that I just mentioned. So that's really a first place to go to access our programs. In addition, our website is another excellent way to find out where, where programs and services are. And our web address is ncoa.org. You know, you mentioned a few things there about Medicare uh, enhancements that uh, your organization is involved with. And I think all of them are very important to seniors. Uh, I wear hearing aids. Uh, they're not inexpensive. Uh, vision is becoming uh, a, another expensive proposition. Um, and uh, I was wondering how realistic do you believe? And I know this is an opinion. I'm not asking you to state that this is definitely going to happen. But an opinion on do you believe that this is real, that this might be something that will get support and will be done? Well, I'm hopeful that it will get done. I think as a start, these benefits are going to be quite low because the costs will be, you know, astronomical. So, for example, you know, the, the, the new vision benefits may pay for um, a certain amount for a vision exam and eyeglasses. I don't think we're going to see, you know, full payment for hearing aids, uh, for example, but I, I think it's a start and it's the first time in almost 20 years that Congress is looking at making changes to Medicare. And we're doing everything we can to advocate um, for these changes because we might not have an opportunity for, for quite a while. So I would say time will tell over the next several weeks. Um, but, you know, we're we're hopeful that at least something will happen, that there'll be some benefits to help, particularly, you know, low income older adults who may be struggling to pay for even, you know, an appointment to see an eye doctor to get their eyes examined. Or yeah, it's, it's a long time waiting. You would think with the population, the majority of the population at some point will be 60 and over that they would, you know, start focusing on, you know, um, providing health care for, for, for conditions that come as we age, which, you know, definitely are include vision and hearing loss. Um, dental. Dental, so, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, we had uh, Medicare Part D, which was the prescription drugs. You know, that was added about 17, 18 years ago. Right. And then really the only other change since that time is as part of the Affordable Care Act, things like the annual wellness visit, which I, I really want to encourage all your listeners to take advantage of under Medicare. So this is something that your doctor should be providing to you on a yearly basis. And it's a preventive service. It's not to go in to you know, talk about your heart disease, although that may come up or diabetes or arthritis, but it's a way for doctors to check on a number of different things, um, including your, your falls risk. It also looks at things like depression and yeah. other things that really impact the well-being of older adults. Well, I know one of your titles is geriatric pharmacotherapy. Yes. <laughs> I hope I said it correctly. You did. You did. But uh, there's no question. I know a lot of people who had lots of issues with uh, pharmacies, with drugs uh, when they get older. And uh, that's another area that... Um, medication people get over medicated uh, and they get combinations of medication that don't work very well what what does that mean i'm jumping a little bit here but that part of what you're involved with what what is that uh, what do you do yeah so I'm, I'm a pharmacist by training and i practiced in community pharmacies before i went back to school and got a master's in public health and when i was in my master's program really um I developed a passion for gerontology. So I've done a lot of work 
um, throughout my career in educating older adults and healthcare professionals about the, the special needs of older adults as it relates to medications. And we know that many older adults, because they might have multiple um, ongoing um, conditions, you know, like heart disease, arthritis, diabetes, and, and many others that often take multiple medications. And taking those medications can be very challenging to manage. And, you know, I really advocate for older adults to have their medications reviewed, all their medications, and that includes over-the-counter medications, um, supplements they may be taking, um, topical medications that they may be putting on their body. You know, there are many things on the market now for, for pain that you can put on your joints. And so anything that anybody's taking get those medications checked at least twice a year. Um, because as you may know, Otto, many older adults see multiple physicians and they don't talk to one another. And one doctor doesn't know what the other is prescribing, um, but they, they should, uh, but that doesn't often happen. But, you know, have medications checked by the primary care physician or the pharmacist. And another thing I recommend to older adults is, you know, go to one pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Make sure that all your prescriptions are being filled um, in one pharmacy because the, the pharmacist can also check for drug interactions or you look at the dosages of the medications to make sure that they're appropriate for the older person and um, you know, work with the, with the doctor when they do identify problems. You know, so, I, I think one of the problems is the doctors are on the clock. They have like 15 minutes to sit down with somebody and to analyze your medications is probably low on their list, my opinion, yeah. uh, from personal experience as well. Uh, and uh, some of it is you have the tools nowadays. Uh, you don't want to get overeducated about it. But if you have access to the Internet, they're um, talking to the audience. Really, there's lots of ways you can help manage that part of it uh, as well. But I think, you know, the pharmacy is the place where they will take the time if you if you try to get them to take the time. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you may need to make an appointment with a pharmacist, you know, for later in the day when they're not so busy. But I, I agree. Um, pharmacist is best suited to answer questions that you may have about your medications that you might not be able to get answered because of the, the short period of time with your with your doctor. Um, but as I mentioned, the annual wellness visit, medication reviews are also part of the annual wellness visit. So when you do have the annual wellness visit, bring all your medications with you. Okay, well, this is a good time um, to take a quick break. We'll continue with our guest, Kathleen Cameron, and she is with the Center for Healthy Aging National Council on Aging. You're listening to Project Independence in You here at 88.1 FM and WCW. P.org. We will be right back. So I get this call from my grandma and she's like, what's a podcast and how much does it cost? So I tell her podcasts are like radio shows, but you can download them on any device and listen to them anywhere at any time. And they're free. And then she says, I see. But where can you find good ones? And I'm like, go to WCWP.org slash podcast and check out the lineup of original shows or download any podcast app on your phone or tablet and search for LIU Studios. And she's all like, oh, that's Sounds easy. And then she asked me what an app is. LIU Studios Podcasts, available on any podcast app. You know, those little button things on your phone screen. Just ask your grandkids. Welcome back to Project Independence in You, Community Talk Radio, 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm your host today, um, Rebecca Miller, and the co-host is Otto Los. Um, we've been talking with Kathleen Cameron. She is the Senior Director for the Center for Healthy Aging and National Council on Aging. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're in Arlington, Virginia right now. And I just want to, you know, thank Zoom for um, giving us this opportunity to speak with you because if it wasn't for Zoom, we really wouldn't have this wonderful opportunity to get all this really, really, you know, incredible information for our seniors and who are our listeners, our senior listeners here in North Hempstead. So thank you so much. Oh, great to be here. Thank you for, for joining now, Dan us. Dan is right, though. We should record the in-between stuff because we, we, <laughs> had, we had a good chat offline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and I guess the, 
the you know the summary of it was the the, the need to self get very involved yourself with management of pharmaceuticals, drugs, and your health. Um, you can't just count on a doctor. They all mean well, uh, but it's not easy. They're on they're on a time crunch, and that's real, whether we like the idea or not. And whatever you can do to help make the time you do have with them of the best quality, I think is important. Right. You know, things like having a written list of your detailed pharmaceuticals yes. uh, and, and what you pointed out, the, you know, uh, vitamins or any other supplement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. We all need to be empowered to, you know, kind of take control of our health and being as educated as possible is really key to that. And I want to encourage um, your listeners to take a look at ncoa.org. We continually add new information on our website on a variety of health topics. And, you know, most recently we've been trying to also educate older adults about the, the COVID-19 vaccines and the boosters because you know, that's an issue that I think will, it's been top of mind for so long. And there's been so much confusing information out yes. there and things change so, so frequently. So we've been, you know, trying to stay up with, with what's happening and provide um, clear, concise information on the vaccines. Now, the you know, I wonder if we, you know, how we talk about, you know, being your self-advocate, you know, advocating for yourself. But I think seniors, a lot of them, if we say, you know, why don't you try to advocate for yourself like you would advocate for your spouse or your child? You know, think about yourself, too, in that way. I think we all know how to kind of advocate or help others, but sometimes we don't do it as well for, for ourselves. And, I, you know, I just, especially with like the older seniors, I <laughs> find that they're less, you know, ready to actually advocate for themselves. Um, but, you know, we, we do a lot of things here at Project Independence, certainly Otto, you know, we talk a lot about um, our circle of support program, which um, we just kind of try to, it's, it's kind of like, like the black book for your life, you yeah. know, who would you call, where, everything you could think about, you know, and the times of days where you can actually access people, just everything you could think about and that it does need to be updated. So we actually give a booklet to, to the seniors and who, who participate. And, um, you know, it's like, it's like their advocate too. So it's, there's a lot of stuff. So we definitely um, know how important it is to, to advocate. And we're always doing programs on medication management. I mean, it's, you know, Christina is, you know, uh, you know, schedules a lot of experts too to speak about pharmacology and, and that. And, you know, the, the COVID vaccine, well, you know, we definitely have to talk about that. Um, I wanted, we want to hear a lot about fall prevention too. And, um, you know, I'm curious, you know, with what you have all seen concerning isolated seniors, certainly that number has gone up through COVID. You know, you've had your healthy seniors who've been very active, who all of a sudden became, these homebound seniors, not because of, you know, be, becoming frail or sick, but because to protect themselves from COVID. So I wonder if, because they are homebound, if you've seen numbers go up in falls and, and what kinds of things have you seen in the senior population, you know, over COVID? Yeah, yeah, we, we have seen increases in falls you know, during the past 18 months. Um, some of it's anecdotal evidence, some is, you know, emergency department visits for falls. And a lot of it is because people have been homebound, you know, particularly during, you know, the first 12 months of the pandemic before the vaccines were available and people weren't exercising. I think we, we, you know, we all were getting out and doing the types of things that we normally would do and, and for older adults. Um, you know, maintaining muscle strength and balance and flexibility is really, really important. And that takes, you know, regular physical activity in order to maintain that. But when, when you're at home, it's hard to do that for many older adults, particularly those that might not have access to technology or, um, 
internet or know how to use internet and, and technology to access. Now there are lots of pro exercise programs are available um, online for older adults to take. Many offered through senior centers and other community-based organizations. But yes, we have been seeing increases in falls over the past um, year and a half and really want to encourage all your listeners again to to try to maintain or increase physical activity. It has so many benefits, not only for falls prevention, but general health and in physical and mental health. So with Project Independence, I'd like to brag about us as much as possible, but um, you know, what you were saying is very true that there, you know, Otto is a you know, huge advocate for technology with seniors, especially those that have access to it, maybe don't know how to use it, how to train, how, you know, and all that. But one of the things that we have to acknowledge is the fact that there are seniors that don't have technology, they're not interested, they're not going to use it. So um, with the town of North Hempstead, we have a government channel for all the residents that live in North Hempstead, and we have been airing fitness classes, Tai Wonderful. Chi, yoga, um, Zumba, gold, you know, that kind of those kinds of classes, and they air seven days a week on um, gov the government channel. And I think every resident in North Hempstead has access to it now. Um, we had some trouble with some of the villages and we got a lot of calls when it, we first started airing for seniors who never worked out before. Uh -huh. That they were homebound, that they said, I, you know, I'm doing this in my chair. I didn't even know I could exercise in my chair. And, mm -hmm. you know, all of the um, instructors always will say, you know, you can do this class seated do what feels right, follow along, listen, you know, and, um, you know, we had a lot, a lot of calls like that. And we are continuing doing it, even though we're, we're starting to do in-person classes. And we also do Zoom classes. But there always, there's going to be that population that are homebound and don't have technology. We, you know, can't forget about that, you know. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, well, that's, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, congratulations on, on your efforts to get those programs out to, to older adults. And I'll just make a plug for, you know, Tai Chi. Tai Chi has been around for centuries and it's so great that you're offering that program. Oh yes, And it's been well-researched as well. And it's been shown to reduce falls by as much as 35% among older Amazing. adults. So really significant. And what's great about Tai Chi is, as you mentioned, you know, you can start Tai Chi from a seated, seated position and just do as much as you can. And over time, um, the participant will build up strength, better balance, so that the program can be done maybe next from a standing position with a chair in front to, for added balance. And then from there, move to doing it um, on their own. So, um, you know, Tai Chi is one of the programs that we promote at NCOA um, because it has been shown to be so effective in reducing falls and falls risk factors for lots of different populations. And it's also good for pain management, for people with Parkinson's disease. So um, kudos. Yeah, thank you. We do a lot of, Tai. we have, um, right now we have the one instructor and we, air Tai Chi about three to four times a week on North Hempstead television. Um, we also will be having two in-person classes um, come the fall, actually next week. And another thing that we do through Langome is they come weekly to one of our centers and do a balancing program for the seniors all in the chair. So um, yeah, we do, we, it is, it is, it is very, very important. I have to put a plug in for yoga too. Yoga is very important mm -hmm. as yeah. well. And we well, do. Rebecca is a yoga. yoga instructor, correct? Oh, great. <laughs> we do um, chair yoga too. So we do a lot of chair yoga um, and, you know, we have that yoga is on um, also North Hempstead television several times a week. And we always offer the chair for any class, um, you know, and just kind of, give a little guidance, you know, how to modify standing classes to chair class. So, um, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're offering these classes. So I agree exactly with what you're saying. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, if I might, um, could I share um, our six steps to prevent a fall? This is something that yes. we um, talk a lot about. And I want to mention that next week is national 
Falls Prevention Week. Um, NCOA has been a leader in facilitating um, Falls first Falls Prevention Awareness Day, which had been held on the first day of fall for many, many years. And then we expanded it to a full week last year um, during the pandemic. And we're going to continue to uh, promote Falls Prevention Awareness Week. Um, and there's lots of activities happening across the country, and I'm sure there are some within your local community as well. Um, but for many years, we um, promote what we call the six steps to prevent a fall. And this is kind of a, you know, if you're thinking about your falls risk, this is kind of a guide to, um, you know, tips for reducing your risk. And the first is, I think, something we've already talked about is finding a good balance an exercise program, and you have them available, it sounds like, right, um, through the TV in your community. And But there are many others offered through probably the Area Agency on Aging, maybe local senior centers, Matter of Balance is another really great one, Stepping On, um, all I programs that have been, on. you do Stepping On, mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful. Through Northwell. Uh, excellent. Um, another, the next is, talk with your healthcare providers, <laughs> you know, maybe it's during that annual wellness visit that we talked about, but bring it up when you have an appointment, you know, and don't be afraid to ask. Um, the doctor may have some um, tips for you or may do an assessment of falls risk. So that that's really critical. Um, and that's related to the next one that I've already mentioned is having medications reviewed on a regular basis, because there are a lot of medications that cause side effects, you know, like um, dizziness, some medications may lower blood pressure too much, that make older adults woozy. Many medications um, make people sleepy during the day, even those that are taken maybe mm -hmm. at nighttime to help for sleep. There's that daytime sedation that um, can happen to older adults that all can increase the risk of, of falls. Um, you know, we will continue with this. Uh, we do have to take a quick break. We'll be continuing with our guest, Catherine Cameron from the National Center for Healthy Aging and National Council on Aging. You've been listening to Project Independence in You at 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS App Store on Apple devices or the Google Play Store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. Welcome back to Project Independence in You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I am your host, Rebecca Miller, and our co-host today is Otto Lose. I don't even know why I have to say today because Otto is kind of our permanent co-host since the pandemic COVID. started, right? Yeah, so yes. thank you so much. Also, um, Christina Liu, who is the fabulous radio show producer of Project Independence in You and pulls the show together every single week. And next week will be how many years? 10 years, 10 years. And um, pretty much the, the radio show has aired in some capacity every, every week. So, um, and that's all really thanks to, to Christina. Um, and we'll be having the Christina Lou Hour starting at 11. We'll be doing with Talk of the Town, um, talking about everything that's going on in North Hempstead and Project Independence. So um, we're gonna get back to Kathleen Cameron. You were going through a very important list um, for our listeners. So um, if you would like to continue. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we were talking about, again, about medications and the fact that there are several classes of medications that cause side effects that can increase the risk for falls and cause things like sleepiness during the day, um, dizziness um, that can predispose someone to be at risk for falls. And um, I think Otto was providing a great example during the break. One of his friends was on a medication, um, Xanax, which 
is used for anxiety. It's used sometimes to help people sleep, those who have insomnia, but it really should only be used for short periods of time. And, but many older adults have prescribed Xanax and other medications in that class for long periods of time, which as we get older too, our bodies metabolize medications differently. We don't, our kidneys don't work as well. And we may not um, eliminate drugs like we used to. And these medications can build up and create even more serious side effects. You know, something like lead, leading to dementia-like symptoms or delirium in some, in some older adults. So again, having that regular medication review is critically important, not, all, not only for falls prevention, but for general, general health. Um, so that's, that's the third step to prevent a fall. The next is um, getting vision and hearing checked um, annually and updates to eyeglasses if needed. And because, you know, our eyes and ears are really important in keeping us on our feet, keeping us balanced. Um, you know, certainly when we have hearing issues, it can absolutely impact our, our balance, our what's called our vestibular function. And um, we talked earlier about the potential for Medicare to be covering at least some of the costs for, for vision and hearing. Um, but we really encourage folks to, to get those annual exams. Well, I'll double support that. I do wear hearing aids. And uh, uh, I will admit that the, the number is it takes seven years to admit you have a hearing problem. Uh, hearing is a funny thing. It doesn't happen in one day. It's a very gradual process that you lose your hearing. Mm -hmm. And it's not like vision. You look at a television and you know it's blurry. When you listen to people, you really don't know what you don't hear. So people are very, very reluctant for cosmetic reasons as well to get involved with hearing aids. And I'm a thousand percent supporter of the fact that you should have your hearing checked. And if you have a problem, you should really do something about it. If your family's telling you you can't hear, you can't hear no matter what you say. Uh, you know, you, you, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's so important to be able to hear what's going on around you. I will admit that if I take these things out, I don't hear hardly anything. And I'll, it, you don't realize how bad it is until you, until you can hear again. And uh, I just encourage anybody who's listening who has any kind of hearing problem to try to do something about it. You know, get over the mental block, whatever it might be. Um, anyhow, that's my editorial comment. <laughs> Of course, and they make hearing aids today that are, you know, not as arduous as the ones in the back. I mean, you, you know, they literally are, are almost invisible unless you're really looking. So there's you that. can't hardly see mine to be blunt right. about, it, you know, um, and uh, and they are expensive. Uh, yeah. There's no question. And but there are options if you have a real financial problem. Uh, if you're a veteran, you can go to the VA. Uh, the, we've had people on with the Lions Club. They have a program called Lend an Ear where they will donate and give us via an audiologist hearing aids to people who have a financial problem. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of audiologists are involved with that program. I don't know if there are others, but there probably are. Uh, but there's no doubt hearing aids are expensive. Uh, the ones that are advertised depends on your life. Some people can function with the $200 things that they talk about because they're not that engaged outside of maybe listening to TV or whatever. Um, but you really should do something about it no matter what the problem. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, there have been you know, a number of studies looking at the impact that hearing loss and uncorrected hearing has on isolation and loneliness. Yeah. Um, you know, many older adults who have hearing loss or don't have hearing aids, you know, may not participate in activities that they normally would, um, you know, because they feel self-conscious because they can't participate in conversations that might be happening, might miss parts of the conversation, not know how to respond. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Well, more. it leads to dementia type symptoms. Also, people might think you have dementia, yeah. but the facts are you can't hear. So yeah. you don't know what's going on. So you, you whatever you'd say, might be completely irrelevant to what the conversation was. Uh, and you don't know it because you don't know what you didn't hear. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. 
All right. So um, the next step to prevent a fall is um, keeping your home safe. And I think that's probably near and dear to project independence, right? Um, you know, removing things like tripping hazards, improving lighting throughout the house, um, making stairs safe, um, installing grab bars in the bathroom. Those are some basic things, but we have some great resources. There were the lamps. I have to throw that in. That's a big one. The what? The lamp, lamps and cords and yeah. Yes, yes. Tacking down cords or, um, you know, I really like to, I, I, you know, advocate for sensor lights in the, the bedroom um, because a lot of falls happen at nighttime when older adults are getting up in the middle of the night to go to um, the bathroom. Um, you know, we need to make sure there's a clear pathway um, from the bed to the bathroom, but, you know, having those sensor lights in place is really critical. And, you know, they've become pretty inexpensive and easy to install, you know, across say the, the edge of the wall. Um, or a sensor light on the, um, you know, the bed stand, the nightstand um, next to the bed is really great. Um, we, you know, I, many older adults still live in homes that have stairs, which are, can be challenging to navigate. There really should be handrails on both sides of the stairs. I love, um, you know, putting tape on the edge of each step, because again, as we get older, our vision changes and we may not be able to have the depth perception as we did as we were younger. And also sometimes the stairs, if they look exactly the same, kind of blur into one another and a step could be missed as we go up, up the steps. So just a piece of, um, you know, like colored tape, even some of the painter's tape, put that on the edge of the, of the steps is a really simple way to prevent a fall. Um, you know, some older adults are no longer able to use steps and maybe need something like, you know, a lift if, if that is affordable for some folks. Um, if not, there are lots of resources in the community. I don't know if you have like um, rebuilding together. We or... certainly do. do. We have contracts Great. with them. We also did um, along with United Way many years ago and continue to work with them on um, the access to home program. So right. we did a lot of work, you know, we're kind of really we pushed that, you know, that main level living concept. So you're yes. not, you know, if you have to go downstairs in your basement for your refrigerator or your washer dryer and you're carrying baskets, you're on the phone. I mean, there's such a, you know, an opportunity for fall in all these, you know, when, like you were saying, going up the steps for your bedroom or that's where your main bathroom is. But, you know, one of the important things too that we, you know, we talk all about and if only we all did plan you know, this is something that people, you know, maybe around my age should yep. think about if Absolutely. that house is going to be the house you, you want to stay in is to really, you know, in addition to make sure that your roof, everything is kept up, is to focus on a main level that perhaps you could live where you're not, you know, up and down the steps. Because once you fall, if anything happens to a hip, your house has to be set up for you to yep. come back home to. You know, you, you have steps in the front of the house or you have your bedrooms upstairs. You're you, you want to be able to get home. And, you know, so planning is is so important. But the advice now is even more important for people who don't have that option to, you know, do construction in their house. But so being, you know, completely aware of your surroundings and the opportunity for slips and falls. Yeah. You yeah. know, some of that applies to any age because if you Absolutely. wind up hurting yourself, or, you know, you, you break, you hurt your knee playing uh, soccer or whatever, you have to be able to get up and down. And yeah. even no matter how old you are, you might have a problem doing that. So really, it doesn't hurt to think a little bit like that yeah. at an earlier age. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, Rebecca, I loved what you said about, you know, when we're in our you know, 50s, even our 40s, you know, if you're making, um, re, you know, changes to your home, if you're doing remodeling, take that opportunity and do some of the things that are going to help you when you reach, you know, your 60s, 70s, and 80s and having that, um, mm -hmm. you know, the room on the main level. Yeah. 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 I wish more people would do that. I mean, right. we still have, 
sort of a, you know, we live in an age of society. We need to change attitudes about that. And most people think that, well, if I make changes for my older years, it's going to look institutional. It's not going to look the way I want it to look. That's not the case anymore. No. Even grab bars are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, you know, it's funny when we were doing access to home, this was in 2007, when we first did it, it, you just learn so many things that, you know, when I'm at someone's house and their parents there, I'll say, um, you know, you know, why do you even have a ladder in your house? Like get rid of that ladder. You don't need anything on the top shelf. We do have to take um, a quick break. This is Project Independence in You at Community Talk Radio. I'm your host, Rebecca Miller with Otto Lose. We've been speaking with Kathleen Cameron and we will be right back. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. Welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio, 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller, your host for today, along with co-host Otto Lose and um, Christina Liu, who's the radio show producer. We've been speaking with our guest, Kathleen Cameron. Um, we're so grateful to have you and all this, all this information. So welcome back. Um, we were, I think this is our last segment with you and it flew by. So we were talking about, you know, making the home safe, being aware of your surroundings at, at all times. And, you know, if something doesn't look right, just like everything else, then it probably isn't, you know, okay. um, <laughs> clearing those steps, nothing on the steps. I mean, it's, you put things on the steps. I do too. And then I, you know, and then I remember, no, I don't want anything on the step because like Otto was saying, you know, at any age, I mean, we're all aging, right? Even if we're in our twenties where, I mean, right. theoretically we're, we're, we're all aging, but it's good habit and, you know, good planning to, you know, look around and see the things that are, you know, that are dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great segue to the last tip on uh, preventing a fall, our sixth step to preventing a fall. And that is, you know, talking with family members and friends and soliciting, you know, help and support. And it sounds like that's something that Project Independence has top of mind in the way you described the little black book um, earlier in the program you know, I think we all have friends and family members who want to help. Um, Many older adults don't like to ask for help, but when it comes to, you know, something as important as preventing a fall, which really does significantly impact ongoing independence, getting help from family and friends is key. And I know, you know, we all, you know, great examples, we all kind of collect so much as we As we go through the year um, and as we get older, we might have, you know, piles of things in our homes, but, but getting help to kind of clear that clutter away is really important as a falls prevention strategy, particularly, as you mentioned, on, on steps, but on pathways, you know, that are frequently, frequently taken throughout the day. um, For I mean, we talk about things like just changing a light bulb could be a very dangerous proposition. Yes. You get up on a little step stool or whatever, yep. and uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ask a grandchild or, you know, um, a neighbor to come in uh, and change that light bulb. Yeah. We, we have found that um, people want to help. Like, you know, so if somebody kind of asked me, I mean, I should be a little bit maybe more aware of my neighbors and maybe they're aging and, and offer something. But, you know, sometimes I, I just don't see. So if, but if somebody had asked me, Hey, you know, I see you go to the store on Thursdays, you know, you know, I, I, would you, you know, mind picking something up for me? I would love to, I mean, I would be happy to do it, but I think, you know, we need to be aware of people that may not be getting out as they used to. And, you know, people who are at home, we do want to help, 
you know, like seniors who can't get out. I mean, you know, we do, we do, we really, people do want to help. I mean, it, it, there was a very quick story when I first started with Project Independence and there was a um, elderly man, he was actually in his nineties, lived in Great Neck Plaza and he had recently become widowed. And at the same time, he drove up to that point, couldn't drive anymore. And he became very isolated, used to be very outgoing, a big member on all the boards and everything going on. And he just, he just collapsed. He didn't know what to do because he used to take care of his wife, his family, himself, and went from that to not being able to do it. And, you know, he finally just called a neighbor and asked the neighbor, you know, if you're going to the market, could you, would you mind getting me this? And I'm like, sure, of course. And then Someone else, you know, heard the neighbor told them that, you know, hey, Joe needs help. And she's like, oh, sure. So he knocked on the door. It went from him not being able, like losing weight, being depressed, to turning people down. <laughs> Listen, I, my, my fridge is full. I don't need anything, but thank you so much. So that was kind of, you know, what happened. And that is, that is, people are, you know, in your community and, and would, probably like to help but no no you know they just don't want to ask like you said before you know Kathleen that that exactly. generation they don't want to mm -hmm. ask for help you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes I agree and I I would love to share a story of my dad um, who um, died from complications from a fall back in January he was not a frequent Sorry. faller um, he was in assisted living and um in, in January, he had a fall and he didn't tell anybody about it. I mean, I, I work in falls prevention. He, he never mentioned it to, to me. And, you know, because he wasn't, he wasn't injured outwardly. He, he was fine, but he hit his head. And he, um, he was on a blood thinner mm. and he had a brain bleed. And, and then a few weeks later, he had another fall. And the same thing happened and he, and he died from a subdural hematoma, mm -hmm. which, which you may, may have heard of. But so I want to, the message of the story is, you know, if you do fall, report it right away because you, you may not know that you have an injury um, as my dad, um, you know, felt that he was, he was perfectly fine. And, you know, it's really important, particularly if you are on medications like Coumadin, which thins the blood, which can increase the risk of, of that brain bleed and could lead to death. Mm -hmm. So very that's, that's Thank another sharing big, and issue that we feel need. very sorry to hear. Yeah, that had that. to be uh, very difficult to be blunt it, about it for you because it was, of, it was of, very difficult yeah, yeah. of how you'd make your living basically. And what you talk about, um, it's gotta be a little frustrating, I would think, but anyhow, we empathize. But I, I hope your listeners will understand, again, the importance of reporting those falls. And you know, if you need to call EMS, you know, emergency medical, that, that's okay. That's what they're, they're there for. And more and more EMS providers are serving as great falls prevention resources, and they can help connect older adults, particularly those who are frequent fallers, to programs in the community. You know, I would have to ask, did the assisted living uh, place know that he had fallen and had they done anything? Um, they, I, yeah, I think they would have. They, they definitely. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's important for not just us individuals, but organizations to uh, to make sure that if somebody does fall, they don't take for granted that nothing happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, you know, um, one of the things you were talking about before, too, is so many symptoms, you know, when, when you were talking about people that were taking Xanax and, you know, and then also like your father's fall, so many things are masked and could be different. That's why it's so important. Like you can mask some pain that you're, you have an illness for if you're taking a Xanax, you know, and that was another avenue. And also, you know, with your father, my father actually had a subdural hematoma too, but he did, so he made it, he was much younger he um and the symptoms he had um he just had a headache you know mm -hmm. so he just thought it was a headache so mm -hmm. but it was after a, a trauma my father was actually a, 
a boxer and he was doing, he was sparring at an older age. Wow. He, was, he was like 65 or 66 and he, he, he got hit in the head and he doesn't remember, he had his like, you know, protection on and everything, but doesn't remember the whole thing, what happened and then was fine, felt fine. And, you know, came home and just started having a little headache. It didn't go away. And he started even getting like a shuffling gait a little bit. And then finally, you know, we took him to the hospital. We said, something's going on. And, yeah. you know, he, we didn't relate it to that punch because we, he, he, he did okay. So that's why it is so important. Like what happened to your father, you know, he might've got up and said, thought to himself, oh, I'm fine. But that little, that little headache, you know, that little, you don't connect those symptoms. Mm -hmm. so it's so important. My mother had the same problem, yeah. uh, and it and it indicated it looked like she had a stroke, but right. she didn't. But uh, you know, but she was older. She was in the nineties, so she was fortunate. Yeah. Well, yeah, well so. thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. prevention is so important. Too. Yeah, and one one other item I, I just want to sure. mention as well. We have a tool on our website called the Falls Free Checkup. And it's a simple 12 question falls screen that anyone can take. And we advise people to take it, you know, at least on an annual basis. And I'd love it if maybe on your website, you could put the link um, to it. I'll send it to Christina, um, but people can fill out the, answer the 12 questions and then we'll follow up with information for them that will be sent to them um, by email if they provide their email address. You know, we always like to emphasize the positive on this show. So yes. one of the things that I read about you was the um, uh, expression of gratitude. And I think that's a topic that uh, might be a positive ending to what's been a very informative segment. Sure. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yes. No, at, at NCOA, we definitely advocate for gratitude. We have a program called the Aging Mastery Program, and maybe we can talk about it on another, another segment with you. But a key part of that program is how important the, the expression of gratitude is. And, that, and there are health benefits from expressing gratitude, improvements in um, you know, heart health, and mental health, for example. Um, we really advocate for people to journal and write down what they're grateful for every day and also express verbally gratitude to um, their loved ones, their family members and their friends. Um, it, it can make, it can really lift spirits by, by thinking about you know, what's happened during your day that you're grateful for. And it may be little things, but that have made a significant difference in the day. So I would love, something I do is I write down at the end of the day, I have a, a notebook by my bedside and I write down what I'm grateful for. And, and it does, it helps us think about what's happened during the day. It might've been a difficult day, but there may have been a nugget of, of hope and um, gratefulness during the day. You know, I think a lot of us uh, feel inwardly a lot of gratitude for a lot of things, but don't always express it externally, if you will, either in written or verbal fashion. And uh, maybe we just feel awkward or uncomfortable doing that. But if you ask yourself why, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's something that it's, this is a golden nugget, as Christina Lou likes to make it, uh, to Keep in mind, you know, expressing gratitude and the word expressing gratitude uh, as opposed to just internalizing right. the gratitude. Uh, share it with others and frankly, share it with yourself. Yes. Yeah. I think part of it is um, apprehension about being vulnerable, you know, having and expressing that to, to other people. But I think after the year and a half that we've been through, I think everyone <laughs> needs to, to, to show gratitude um, to those who have been important in their life during the, this very challenging time. So I loved, <laughs> thank you for bringing that up, Otto. Yeah. Well, I, you know, as I say, we love going with the positive outlook on things. Uh, you know, it's not always, we're not like walking around with a uh, in la la land here. Uh, it's not always perfect. It can be very difficult. But what a great way hand. to come, Adam. Sorry, but we have to we have to go to break. We are grateful, Catherine, that you came oh. on. 
Kathleen, I'm sorry. It was really a wealth of information, and I'm sure we'll have you back. Um, you've been listening to Project Independence in You at 88.1 FM and WCWP.org.